Throughout the ages, art has changed. Every once in a while, somebody challenges the idea of where the direction of art should be going. You have these flip-flops between reason and emotion, and they never seem to coexist. Modern and contemporary art challenge the idea of what art is and who can create it. So when an individual no longer has to be formally trained in order to be considered an artist, who is it that gets to be an artist? And does this idea change with the context of the medium that you're analyzing? Is everyone involved in a video production able to be identified as an artist? If you look at the credits rolling by after a movie, you'll see several names listed. These people may or may not have the training you would think when you watched the film. Are films even considered an art? And what is considered a film? If something cannot be done legally, but is done through acknowledgement, is it still illegal when it happens? If I sit with you in front of a single color screen and talk with you about a seemingly random topic, is that a film? What if I could get you my speech on CD? Is that still a film? The movie doesn't have to be the art in its entirety either. Taking the time to modify each frame of an old real film is also an art form, albeit one that may take a lifetime or more to complete for feature length recolors. So can a film be a process art? Or can only something which exists in the mind of the creator be a process piece? When you gather artists together, does that make their work process art? What if they're on a time limit? Is YouTube a gray area for art? I mean, anyone can make a video, anyone can access a video. Can anyone be a filmmaker or an artist in this realm? Today, we're going to be talking about how films are related to the modernist and contemporary art movements. Now, how would you feel if I just sat here for the next 30 minutes? And how much angrier would you be if you had just paid to go into a theater and see me walk around my house doing the mundane for an hour? That is almost exactly what director Jafar Panahi did in This Is Not A Film. Now, there's a debate over what is and isn't art. The fountain, for instance, is considered art. There are even prank videos that you can find on YouTube of individuals placing random objects, such as a pair of glasses, uh, within galleries to see if anyone will just accept them as being an artistic piece that was put there in the beginning when they were never actually submitted as art to the museum. Other videos will show people placing decals in various places to indicate that items are art when they were not intended to be, such as a video that shows things such as a water fountain and even a seating area and classifies them as art because they wanted to see if people would actually stop interacting with the items and try to figure out a meaning. Nice. 
somewhere in the realm of modernism and contemporary art, we've decided to push the boundaries of what we categorize works as. So why isn't this a film? Well, maybe you or I wouldn't consider it a film, but in the case of contemporary art, the ideas actually make up the art and we as viewers cannot necessarily experience the entirety of what the artist experienced while creating the work. But this is not a film was shown at the Cannes Film Festival. Film Festival. So it is a film, but it can't be because the director was banned from making films during a somewhat delayed sentence. That's actually what this film is about. Panahi was considering another project to protest the government and didn't even make it and was arrested. And thus he wound up with this project instead. It even shows him undoubtedly breaking the rules of his sentence. Yet he sent it to Cannes Film Festival. Something that's not addressed in the film that's important to this is that Iran, where Panahi is located, has a different idea of what film is and what kinds of film are allowed. I'm going to link you to a more in-depth video on this film so you can watch that and see what kinds of things are involved with this issue. Just as an overview, certain items of everyday Iranian culture are acceptable but representative art is not. Representative art could be anything such as a painting about um, angels, or it could just be like your favorite movie. From an artistic movement standpoint, this is not a film follows process art. If you consider the mindset of an artist and the actual idea or creation of the piece to be the art, you get another perspective on Panahi's project. Panahi didn't touch a camera until the very end. He didn't really direct either, except a few times during the film that you can see a defiance from his son, who was the one actually manning the camera and handling the directing. That was part of Panahi's ban. He couldn't touch the cameras, he couldn't direct. He wasn't supposed to be involved in the film process in any way, and he wasn't supposed to leave his house. So the entire process of even making this film within his house was an act of defiance and art. Now normally the film itself would be the total of the art, so there would be some parts that require other creative talents, but they're not really acknowledged as a an art in and of themselves when creating the film, although they are. But this whole movie is just process art. Panahi is making a movie about how to make movies and his desire to be able to continue making movies. That's how many artists seem to be. Imagine if you were told that you couldn't do the one thing that brought you joy. If you're a painter, you're no longer allowed to touch paint of any kind. No brushes, no canvas, none of it. Whether the film winds up being considered a film or not, it's something that he cared about. The movie Blue by Derek Jarman also blurs the lines between what is and is not art and film. The entire film is one simple shade of blue. It's not really a simple shade, it is International Klein Blue, a color invented not that long ago. The shade was so impressive, the creator coated an entire canvas with the paint. Jarman was diagnosed as HIV positive, and as a result lost his vision. The movie Blue was composed of a single screen shade and narration. The narration was provided by his journals of this time, and by his previous book, Chroma, where he explained personal significance for all colors. Aside from the opening and closing credits, the only thing that takes place in blue is the narration about that color. This varies from religious ideas to nature to a story about a human character named blue. 
all the while showing the same background. This film can be contested as a film. The audio is available in full as a CD soundtrack. However, something about the experience of staring at a blank field to the point of actual visual hallucination due to neural boredom is missing when one simply listens to the stories associated with Blue. Additionally, denying the film aspect denies that there is anything important about even the simplest visual aspects to a film. Switching gears to another conceptual film now. Removed is a short film by Naomi Uman that you can find on YouTube. Uman uses nail polish remover to wipe out all of the female members of 1970s softcore porn films. When you watch this film, the absence of the obsession of pornography is almost as graphic as the original collection of videos. The act of wiping away each woman from each frame is a painstaking procedure that could be considered artistic in its own right. Any still taken from this project is haunting, many being nearly fully whited out. The piece itself, as an entirety, also highlights on the focus of the female form. Come here. I tried very hard that time, too. But the good doctor's millions were more attractive. It's too bad, Yvonne. Trains pulled out of the station. Will you stay on the platform and wave to me? No. Conceptual art, including process art, does not have to focus solely on the steps taken to get to a final piece. The time spent creating or the end result of conceptual art can also have significance. For example, removed can largely be about the process of removing the women from frame, but also highlights the male gaze and obsession in film, especially pornography. Where one would expect a person to be, instead harsh white is glaring back, bringing into focus just how much women are shown in porn. By removing the women, Uman protests their portrayal, just as Panahi protested his sentence through This Is Not a Film. The 48-hour film project can be another example of process art. The project happens in many places worldwide, with over 150 total having happened according to the website, and each film is made in just one weekend. Some aspects of the film are announced, and then each team draws their own genre before writing, shooting, editing, and delivering their films. The process is just as important as the end result for these projects. Each city where the project takes place gives opportunity for the best projects of that city to compete against films of other cities. The top 10 festivals of the year worldwide are screened at Cannes Film Festival. Sometimes, the people who are participating go in not knowing many of their fellow project members and have such an incredible time working with certain individuals, they go on to make more films together in less stressful situations. This project brings people together just like other films, just like other arts. The following clip is from Star Swamp Productions in Oklahoma City's run in the 2015 48-hour film project. They were assigned the genre of horror. The required aspects to the film were a bracelet as a prop, the line, do you think you can do that, and the character, 
Anna Vickers. All three aspects are shown in the following clip. You have very slender wrists. I would love to see this on one of them. Do you think you can do it? For me? Conceptual art is not only practiced by fed-up or imprisoned adults. The Oklahoma Summer Arts Institute at Quartz Mountain in Lone Wolf, Oklahoma, is a refuge for many artists of younger ages. Over the course of two weeks, they focus on the art they applied to be accepted for. Creative writers are broken into novelists and poets, musicians form an orchestra, and filmmakers devise plans to capture it all. Some of these films are available on YouTube. And while the process may not have been the most important part of the film for the directors, it was the most important part for the other campers. One student showcases the feelings others get when they participate in their arts, showing artists in their natural habitat of sorts during their creative processes. Much of this was unscripted due to the limited time and the desire for the organic displays of talent. Art is not defined by what is beautiful or what is useful. It's the expression of someone's humanity through their hands and through their abilities and through their hard work. And it is such a profound experience that I, I knew I couldn't do anything. Reaction videos are a momentary flash of performance art. Anyone can pull up a free software, turn on a video, and record their face while they watch a video for the first time. There are entire YouTube channels dedicated to this art form. My god, there's blood everywhere! It's actually a very great production. Now it's dark, and you seem to have lost him, but you're hopelessly lost yourself. What? They got kids! With a murderer. In the distance, a small cottage with a light on. As with any other artistic genre, films are not without controversy and problems within the industry. While Mondrian was criticized for having straight lines in his work while seeking order, films such as the Emoji Movie may blur the lines of what is and is not entertainment or an ad. In this same thread, the Fine Brothers, a channel increasingly popular for their reaction videos, attempted to trademark the terms react video and reaction video. The Fine Brothers are huge on YouTube, but recently they got a lot of backlash after releasing a video touting their React World program. So what exactly is that? Well, according to The Telegraph, the Fine Brothers unveiled a scheme last week to let other video makers produce similar reaction videos if they pay to use their license. One of the brothers, Rafi Fine, called it a huge step for the entire global media industry. This called into question, where do you draw the line in concept art? If the idea is more important to the art than the piece itself, does making a profit from reaction videos entitle the creators to the entire idea of reacting to a video online and putting it up for others to see? In the same way ad infinitum does not violate copyright laws with its use of other texts, reaction videos could not be trademarked as something only the Fine Brothers could do because anyone could market such a video under another title, and the concept of reacting to media was not an original idea which could be captured quantifiably. Raw talent is easily accessible in the same place as every other project featured thus far, YouTube. YouTube has become a hub for content creators who can shuck the standards of their art form. Musicians no longer have to seek out a studio which will accept them and distribute for them, or that will let them purchase the time to create an album. That is still an option, but another option is to just find a quiet room, create, and put the art out for everyone to see. That is a simple form of performance art. Environmental art can be enjoyed by more people than ever. An amateur may take a video of an installation or creation of other sorts in one part of the world, upload it, and give access to thousands around the world, 
anyone can watch a video of incredible art from anywhere in the world with their phones. Narrative art is the most obvious way film ties in with modernist and contemporary ideas. Film allows for review and explanation of a scene. Documentaries about natural disasters showcase the before and after because we are constantly looking around us for inspiration and beauty. Movies are even remade to coincide with current trends. In the context of art, film is one of the newer and more flexible mediums. Anyone can use the camera in their pocket right now to make a movie. Some do. Some make smaller films that disappear using apps like Snapchat and Instagram, and others upload to YouTube for anyone to see at any time. Ponahi creating This Is Not A Film opens up a discussion for whether the opinion of the artist is more important than that of the viewer in the context of a film. Jarman creating Blue it explores what being alone in a theater with this massive shade staring back at you can cause the human mind to do. Uman puts the vulgarity of pornography right up in your face with removed. 48 hour film projects happen so quickly that decisions must be made or the artists risk them being made for them. The Oklahoma Art Institute's camp gives sanctuary for young artists to explore concepts like contemporary and process art. Reaction videos bring the moment for all to see. And YouTube in itself provides a place for everyone to showcase what it is they can do. Be it make an amazing piece of art for everyone to see, or show everyone how they watch a video. Film can explore so much of art. Thank you so much for watching.